Okay, here is a raven skull. This one is the one that I was working on in my video for the art exhibition. You can see that I have taken and stuffed the inside of the cranium with Kleenex and glue. This is to make it stronger because everybody knows how fragile birds are. So that's pretty delicate in, in there. You can see all of the extremely tiny bones. And it's just so, so, so delicate. Now I'm going to show you another raven skull. <coughs> One that has not been worked on as of yet. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me because I'm recovering from flu. Um, now this one is in much worse condition. You can see here, the beak is not even attached. This was a younger bird, so it's smaller. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to stuff this cranium, but it does need stuffed because I can feel it and it feels and it sounds like touching paper mache. And it's not even as strong as paper mache. It's just so, so brittle. Now, the worst part about doing videos in my house are the cats. They get into everything. Come here, checkers. Especially when you're doing something with small objects. But here is that part of the skull. Now, this shows you how delicate they are. Because this is the part that attaches to this. I'm not sure if the camera's focusing right. But here it is. Now this one has a creatine removed. That's just how it came off. It didn't come off the other one, so I left it. Now you can see here, this is just so, so fragile. You can just see the movement and how, t how tiny, how extremely small these bones are. See, now a piece just came off of the inside of the cranium as I picked it up there. Now this comes down and goes in like this. That's how that's supposed to go. Now you can tell how young this bird was because it was not completely fused. This was a fledgling. This was a very young raven. And I, I actually picked this one up myself. Um, my brother-in-law hit it with his car. See there's a piece of the bone that came off of that as I was just gently picking it up. Um, this bird was hit by his car. The skull was not traumatized in the accident, but it was traumatized through the bird hitting the ground. That's what the damage to the skull is. So here's the lower jaw. Now there are a couple of parts missing that I will have to make. Here's how this beak goes together here. And this very gently goes up inside like this. Now it's not exactly how it would be, but there it is. This is a young raven skull. And they are extremely delicate. But you can see there appears to be some staining on this. Now this is its natural bone color. I do not bleach bones. I bleach them with bleach to sanitize, but I do not bleach to whiten. I, I, I'm a fanatic about natural bone. You can see there, there's almost like a cross-like pattern. That's the four plates of the skull. And you don't get this in older birds because they're more fused. You can still see it if you look for it, but it's not as obvious as it is in this individual. This bird my camera had run out of space there. But anyway, as I was saying is that this bird was very young and that is shown by these plates, which is another thing that makes this skull so fragile. Um, there are a lot of little holes in there and that'll help me with filling it. I might take little tiny pair of forceps and put in layers of glue and Kleenex like I did the other one. Or I might just 
fillet of glue. I'm not exactly sure yet, but this skull will be pieced back together and it will be put back together to the best of my ability. Um, this, one of the problems with working with smaller animals is that they are so delicate and it's not every time that you can get them together. Sometimes you break them. I mean, anything smaller than a crow or a squirrel, they're hard to work with because they are so tiny. And this here is a squirrel. Um, I will be filling its cranium. Oh, you can actually see quite well inside of here. But you can see way, way in the back. You can see the sinus cavities right there where the shade goes over. But you can see inside and how the cranium in there is shaped. So you can tell it is quite clean. There's a little bit of darkening on it because again I do not bleach my bones for color. I bleach them for sanitation. And I do have the jaws for this. And their teeth are so, so tiny. I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it. But their jaws are really little. Yeah, it's not focusing on the teeth. But the teeth, the teeth are really tiny. And each one of those little teeth is a separate tooth. But this just shows how fragile little animals are, and one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of small species in the fossil record is because they are like this, and they get crushed, and they, the record of their existence just does not survive, because they're so delicate. And if you're in an area that's completely wet, and the animal comes out of whatever it lived in, if it lived in the trees, it falls out of the tree into a swamp, the wetness and dampness of the environment is going to make this just turn to squish. I've had that happen, leaving songbirds too long in the bleach water and they just squish up. I think I have some skulls in here too. I'm not sure which one of these wrappers contain skulls. It's always good to take a look in there and see exactly what I have. Alright, this is a small bird, I think. Yeah. This is a robin. If you thought the raven was delicate, robins are more so. And, again, there's some creatine on the end there. I'm keeping that on. But you can see how tiny and delicate these little bones are compared to the human hand. Now, I have, I guess you'd call them small to medium-sized hands. <coughs> Okay. There's a robin skull. This one will be decorated for my private collection because of what it is. Well, here is a squirrel. Now these bones are more white because they had been left outside in the sun. They've been sun bleached. Here's another squirrel. You can see some of the shine there where I've been filling in glue to help fill in the void. Now the cranium has a lot of glue in there. And that's to help stabilize it. I do have the lower jaws for this as well, in there somewhere. Here they are. Here's a lower jaws for that individual. this here, not all the parts are here, I have to make some parts. But this is a pheasant or partridge. You can see how delicate this skull is as well. This one has to be filled with glue. I have the lower part, but the part that I'm missing are the two parts, and I don't think they I have no idea where they went. They just, maybe they were carried off by beetles. But they're parts that rest here in the jaw. There's two parts that are missing. I, I will make those. They 
are pretty much just little supports for the jaw. They come up into here. But I'll be having some videos of when I do get around to doing these. Even though I'm not working right now, I'm still oddly busy. There's always something going on. Always something. So, there will be more videos on this channel of my work with bone. They might take a little while to get up, but they'll be there. Oh, and there's Mortimer singing us a song. This is about the time she starts up. Every day she starts making noises and getting all excited and screaming and practicing her human language. Um, right now she's just cawing, but she has been trying to say hello quite frequently now. That's something that she really, really appears to want to do, is to say hello. Um, she said whoa the other day, and the way she said it, she sounded like a Furby. Now, although I do have Furbies, my Furbies have been out of commission for a long time. Um, they're set up where she can see them, but they don't have batteries in them, so she's never, ever heard a Furby. But when she says whoa, it's in the, the voice of a Furby. And so, I guess that's pretty much it for the fragility of bones. Showing you how fragile they are. And you have to be extremely careful working in them. And that this is what a bird skull looks like when the plates separate off of the beak portion there. So, if you found this on the side of the road, what would you think it was? You definitely would not be thinking bird. You, you'd probably know it was a skull, but you'd never know what it was unless you had the rest of it to work with. So, there's the small animal bones I have at the moment, and a discussion on how fragile they really are.